we're going to take a break from functions and we're going to talk about arithmetic and geometric sequences. So first off, a sequence is a string of numbers that follows a particular pattern. Like I've given you a string of numbers here and the pattern is plus two. Each one of those numbers in the sequence is called a term. So notice you have the first term, second term, third term, fifth term, so on and so forth. Now, sometimes you have what is called the nth term, and that is an unknown number in the sequence, and we actually write it as a sub n. Notice the, the n is down a little bit. They call that a sub n. Now, we're going to talk about arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. Arithmetic sequences are sequences whose pattern is plus or minus the same number. So, in this particular sequence, again, we are adding 2 each time. And this is linear. Geometric sequences are sequences whose pattern is multiplying or dividing by the same number. And in this sequence that I've given you, we're multiplying by 3 each time. Now, this is not this uh, geometric sequences may or may not be exponential because if you remember in exponential functions, the b value, the rate of change, could never be negative. There is no st restriction like that in a geometric sequence. So that's why we don't say their geometric sequences are always exponential. Now another term you're going to need is explicit formula. And an explicit formula is a formula to find any term in a sequence given the value of the first term and whatever the rate of change is, whether it's a common difference or a common ratio. So now that we have our vocab down, let's look at arithmetic sequences. And the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence is given as a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times the quantity n minus 1. And what the a sub n stands for is some unknown value in the sequence that you want to find. a sub 1 is the value of the first term in the sequence. d is your common difference, either plus some number or minus some number. And n is the position of the unknown term. So let's look at our first difference, or I mean our first sequence here. The first thing I want you to do is find the common difference. So if I look at that, I can see I'm adding 5 each time. So my common difference is 5. Now my first term is 7, so I'm going to use that 7 and that 5, and I'm going to write the explicit formula for this sequence. a sub n equals my first term 7 plus my common difference of plus 5 times a quantity n minus 1. All right, the second one, if I look at it, my common difference is minus 7. I'm going down 7 each time. My first term is 19, so I'm going to use 19 and negative 7 to write my explicit formula, a sub n equals 19 minus 7 times the quantity n minus 1. Now, when we're looking at this third one, it's kind of hard to see the pattern here. But if I take each one of the fractions and give it a common denominator, then it's pretty easy to see that, oh, I'm adding 3 eighths to each term. I know that my first term is 1 eighth, so I'm going to use those two and write my explicit formula. Now, the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to give you a formula, and then I'm going to ask you to find one or more terms in the sequence. Actually, on this particular one, I want you to find the first three terms. Well, I know my first term has to be 4, because that's a sub 1 in my formula. So to find any other term, let's say, let's find the second term. I'm going to take the number 2, because that's the position I want to find, and I'm going to replace n with it in my formula. So to find a sub 2, I get 6. Or I could use my rate of change, which is plus 2, and find terms. Okay, now let's look at geometric sequences. The explicit formula for geometric sequences is a sub n equals <clears throat> a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. Now, it's very important that you realize that that's r raised to a power. 
okay, where again, a sub n is my unknown term, a sub 1 is the value of the first term of the sequence, and my r is my common ratio, either mul or multiplying by uh, a whole number or a fraction. And of course, n is the position of my unknown term. So let's take a look at this sequence, my first sequence, and find what my common ratio is. Well, I'm looking at this, and I can see that I'm multiplying each time by negative 6. I know that my first term is negative 1, so I'm going to use that negative 1 and that negative 6, and I'm going to write my explicit formula, a sub n equals negative 1 times, the, times negative 6 raised to the n minus 1. Okay, my next one, I realize that I am dividing by 2. Well, I'm, my formula doesn't have a divide function in it, so we're going to just say that dividing by 2 is the exact same as multiplying by 1 half. Okay, my first term is 56. So a sub n equals 56 times 1 half raised to the n minus 1. And this last one, again, if I change these all to uh, improper fractions, it's going to be a lot easier to see that what I am doing here is multiplying by 3 each time. I know my first term is 1 half, so I'm going to plug in, or excuse me, oh darn it, I did that wrong. There we go. My first term is 1 half, not 1 and 1 half, times 3 raised to the n minus 1. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to give you a explicit formula for a geometric sequence, and I want you to write the first three terms. Well, I know the first term in my sequence has to be 2, because that's a sub 1 in my formula. And to find any other term, like let's say a sub 2, I'm going to take 2 and replace n in my formula, everywhere I see an n, and solve. And I get 8 is my second term. Now, I could also say, hey, my um, rate of change is times 4, so I could use that to find the next term, which is 32. All right, now we've gone over a lot of stuff. Make sure you've taken notes. Go back and redo anything you want. Then I want you to do um, the independent practice. So pause your video and complete this table. When you're finished, come back and we will compare answers. So pause your video now. Okay, check your answers against mine and make sure that you ask any questions of your teacher if you don't understand anything that's done here. Now, go to the next part of your independent practice and complete these two uh, problems where you're finding the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence and first three terms of a geometric sequence. So pause your video now. Okay, and now compare yours answers with mine. Now there is a teacher talk over this, and uh, you can work on that and schedule that with your teacher, and then you're going to be ready for your practice.